Good afternoon. So recently it was announced that, you know, California, we're going to be cutting water to uh, thousands of uh, farmers out there. Uh, I mean, we're, we're going to about 20 years now of a, what's called a, a mega drought. So here in Central Valley, we're kind of short on water. I mean, if you look at the news, the reservoirs, the lakes, they're kind of all drying out. But I wanted to show you some of the, uh, well, basically how the tropical, tropical fruit trees are doing in the midst of a drought and also in the middle of summer. I mean, we are, this is probably the fourth or the fifth heat wave that we're going to. But the yesterday's weather, it, it was pretty intense. I mean, I know folks in Oregon and Washington, it's something you're not used to, but here in Central Valley, this is becoming the norm for us. But I wanted to show you, um, if you look at how I've got some of the mangoes here positioned, I mean, right now it is uh, 104 degrees and this is mostly in the shade. So it's, uh, yeah, I mean, if you look at some of the mangoes, I mean, they're, they're doing fine. I mean, I, I don't see any negative impacts from the heat at all. Um, I, I know the, the camera can't see it, but if you look at the top, the canopy, I've got basically the whole bamboo protecting basically half of the yard right here. Come at about noon or so, this entire yard, uh, half of the yard, this section anyhow, is fully shaded. So, I mean, talk about, you know, hub trees. So, in the Central Valley, there, there, I will say there is one advantage that we have that actually allows us to use less water than other places. For example, let me show you. For the most part, in the Central Valley, we're probably going to have clay soil. Clay soil, I will say one of the nice things about clay soil, this is just straight up clay soil. One of the nice things about clay soil is its ability to hold on to moisture. I mean, this is really good. I mean, this is, if you look at the top, I mean, this looks desert dry, but then right underneath that. So this is one benefit that we have going for us uh, in the Central Valley is, is actually our clay soil, <laughs> which can also be a, a double-edged sword just because a lot of tropicals prefer oxygen over water. So aeration is another key. But, uh, you know, when, when I had my lawn, when the whole yard right here was just nothing but f nice grass, I remember uh, my water bill generally was about $60 or so. I mean, now what the transformation to trees and basically removing grass in general, I mean, I think the highest water bill I had was maybe $57. And I mean, I, I do water it quite often. So I wanted to show you also, uh, actually if you could follow me back here, the, the position that I've got everything in, the trees that can take the heat are obviously not protected, such as gravas for example. And also long gins. Uh, but but the trees that can appreciate some shade, I want to show you this is what happens when when it gets a bit too much heat. If you look at some of the uh, the leaves here on this uh, white sapote, I mean this is uh, sun damage. I mean the the outer edge of the leaves like this, this is um, this all sun damage. But what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm not going to do anything at all with, with the damaged leaves. In fact, I'm, I'm going to go and just leave them here on this uh, tree. Because what happens is with damaged leaves, it actually sends a signal to the tree to basically harden up the tree a bit. So th that's one of the first things you should do is do not take any action on the, uh, the damaged pieces. Uh, unless it looks like there might be some fungal or disease issues with it, then yeah, you definitely want to prune it out. But um, 
everything else in my yard seems to be loving the heat. Um, so I, I will say, uh, in addition to what well, number one, saving a lot of water by planting tree and, and getting rid of grass. About 80% of my trees here, tropical fruit trees, are technically drought tolerant. Guavas, once established, are drought tolerant. Uh, longins, once established, are drought tolerant. Jujubes, of course, are crazy drought tolerant. I mean, those guys practically you know, live on neglect. So th that is one positive effect of planting some trees here. Uh, even the mangoes here, Manila mango here, this is also drought tolerant. So I, I don't really have to water it that often, but it wouldn't hurt. So I'll, I'll take you to the front where I've, I've got a, a few more examples to show you. Here's the front. I wanted to show you this. Since we, since two weeks ago, since I last did the video on the papaya, this is what the heat's uh, been doing to the papaya tree. I mean, it, it, it's been very, very fruitful just thanks to the heat. I mean, as I recall, the two weeks ago, I mean, it was just mostly flowers, but uh, you know, thanks to the super, super crazy heat, it's, it started uh, fruiting. And as with most trees, tropical fruit trees, uh, they, they have, they're, they're actually quite smart in that they, they have coping mechanisms to deal with the heat. For example, store fruit, okay, this is the carry store fruit. If you look at the leaves that are uh, exposed to the sun, see how it's kind of just clump up together like that? Whereas the ones that are, say, in the shade, I mean, they're flat, they're not even uh, clumped up at all. So that, that's one coping mechanism that the, the trees have against the intense heat. Yeah, trees, they, they will, over a period of years and years, they will acclimate and adapt to our crazy environment. Black pearl wax jambu here, um, it's going, this was grown from seed. I, I did mention previously that I wasn't going to shade this guy, just uh, in the hopes that it will acclimate. But, you know, I made the decision to go and just shade it, just, and, and after shading it, I mean, the new groves are looking awesome. Sam with uh, some of the, uh, some of the mangoes here. I mean, well, before the mangoes, check out the uh, Thai guava here. Oop. <laughs> That's insane. I mean, I'm just just like what it happened there. I'm gonna have to uh, pluck out some of the fruits here. I mean, these fruits are like softball sizes. So the mango. Um, I mean, this is what happens after I, you know, shade the uh, the mango. This is a, a can mango. I mean, the new groves are looking awesome, phenomenal looking. <sighs> So, I mean, as I said, it's, it's uh, you know, almost most of the trees here in the front are drought tolerant, maybe except the papaya, but jujubes, this is a sugar cane jujube, uh, practically everything up here is drought tolerant. So, if you look at the neighbor's yard, I mean, it's, it's kind of all browning up and, you know, yes, I've got brown wood chip, but Underneath the wood chip, it is very nice and moist and cool for the, uh, the trees. So, I mean, the uh, Corriente mango here, looks like it got sizzled just a bit by the, the heat, but uh, everything else seems to be doing awesome. So anyhow, yeah, that's it. I just wanted to uh, tell you, you know, the, the difference between just having a lawn versus growing something that actually will benefit you in the long run. And in, in my case, anyhow, it actually saves me quite a bit of money. All right, have a good afternoon.